pastors, children's pastors, Sunday school teachers, parents, grandparents, babysitters, and whosoever is looking for a fun biblical summer program for that child or those children in your lives. This is your brother Joe Amato and I prepared something very special just for you. My sister has done Vacation Bible School, VBS, for as long as I could remember. For several reasons, she was unable to organize one for her church this year. So I began thinking of all the children that could benefit from a good VBS. And perhaps for whatever reason, they may be unable to attend one physically this year. Or perhaps you are looking for a VBS program that's not too pricey. Those of you who have hosted VBS before know that they can in fact be very costly with hundreds of dollars just for curriculum alone. So again, I sought the Lord and I believe he instructed me to create and host my own online VBS this year. Since he led me to host a 10-part extensive study in the book of Galatians for adults for my YouTube channel, Pour Out Your Spirit, I also believe that he caused my focus on instruction for the children to be the same as well. The great news is that I'm providing the whole Vacation Bible School program for you at no cost. That's right, you heard me correct, correctly, it is free. However, my friend, I do ask that you kindly pray and seek the Lord as to whatever amount of a love offering that you might mail me in support of my ministry. I've created this five-day program called Galatian Vacation. It includes many things, including worship kids fun songs, meaningful messages, arts and crafts, snacks, snack ideas, Bible memory verse activities, and physical activities as well, and so much, much more. So please view the program first, as there is particular parts that are more leaning towards certain age groups rather than others. So also you might need to see how to prep for certain things like the Bible memory verse activities, the snacks that you need to prepare, and physical mu movements. And all of these, uh, I've tried to look for things that are not too costly for you to get together and plan. So also, if you would kindly email me at pouroutyourspirit7, those are no spaces, pouroutyourspirit7 at gmail.com and request the Galatian Vacation Preparation Packet, I'll send you a Microsoft Word document that includes the following, a five-day schedule, supply list, lyric sheets for all 15 songs that are included in the program, printable children's masks of a sheep, a Pharisee, and a Sadducee for one of our songs, and for younger children, printouts of certain arts and crafts that they might not be able to do on their own, snack ideas, directions, recipes, suggestions, and comments regarding snacks, and directions for Bible memory verse games, and in a separate document, I'll email you my mini memory verse pa um, posters as well. So here is my contact information. If you want to send me a free will love offering of any amount, please send it to Joseph Amato at P.O. Box 230162, Brooklyn, New York 11223. Again, that's to Joseph Amato, P.O. Box 230162, Brooklyn, New York 11223. I really do have a financial need at this time, and I would appreciate whatever the Lord puts on your heart to send for me, my family, and my ministry moving forward. Well, thank you, and God bless you, and I sure do hope that you and the children in your life plan on joining me on my Galatian vacation. God bless. See you soon.
the Galatian vacation are back with you again today with today's question. What were the best things that you learned from the book of Galatians and your Galatian vacation? We learned a lot of great things from Paul's letter to the Galatians this week. Some of my favorites include, number one, about being humble. In chapter 6, we learned that if someone is struggling or overcome by sin, we need to help them to get back to doing the right thing. Paul said that we should share each other's burdens, and this is how we obey Jesus' law. We should not think that we are too important to help others. We should do our own work well and think about our good behavior. God will bring back to us what we do, like planting apple seeds if we want apples, so we must do good and obey God if we want good to come back to us. Number two, about faith. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, we learn that we should think of our old selfish self as having died with Jesus. Now we should let Jesus live through us, not our mind, his mind, not our plans, his plans. We can trust Jesus and give our lives to please him because he loves us and he gave his life for us. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 7, Paul taught that our faith makes us children of Abraham. In Galatians 3:26, he taught us that our faith in Jesus makes us children of God. Number three, about the Holy Spirit. In chapter 5, verses 22 to 25, Paul explained that if you have the Holy Spirit, good things should come from you. A tree brings out its fruit, but the fruit coming from you and I should be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If this is true about us, we don't have to worry about obeying the law because we'll already be doing that. Being free from the law doesn't mean that we break it or we keep on sinning. No way. Paul said that those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. And that since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Finally, number four, about freedom. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Paul told us that Jesus made us free. Now, we need to make sure that we stay free and do not get tied up in slavery to the law again. I just want to mention that our VBS week is not quite over yet. And that what we will talk about today after Arts and Crafts from Galatians will be really special too. Here's a hint. It's about love. So, I'll see you then. Hi everybody. We're in message 5.3, Why Did Jesus Really Come? Let's get right into it. If you ask the question, why did Jesus come, the quick answer is love. John 3.16 teaches us that God so loved the world. He loved us all so much that he sent his one and only Son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. When Jesus had grown and started his ministry, he read the special words from the prophet Isaiah that Isaiah wrote 400 years before Jesus was even born. Jesus read them in the temple to the people who were there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives or prisoners will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor 
has come. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul talked a lot about the Lord's favor. Another word for favor is grace. Grace is favor that we don't deserve. We become Christians and we are saved by faith, by believing in God's grace, that favor that we don't deserve. God graciously sent Jesus to take our punishment because that would have been too difficult for us to bear. Yes, my friend, God's grace proves his amazing love for us. Jesus came for you because of love. Receive his love and have a fantastic day. Now, boys and girls, I present to you Salvation from a Child's Perspective. The first people that lived in the world were Adam and Eve. God made Adam and Eve with free will. That means that they had the power to choose what they wanted to do and what they wanted to say. They could do the right things and be righteous, or they could do the wrong things and be wicked. God is so wonderful that he gave them a beautiful garden to live in. This garden was filled with so many plants and trees, and these plants and trees made delicious fruits and vegetables for them to eat. They could eat from any tree they wanted to at any time, except for one tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If they ate from this tree, God said that they would die. God had been so wonderful to Adam and Eve. He had never lied to them. But the devil went into the snake's heart. And he said, God lied to you. He does not want you to eat from this tree. Because it will make you smart like him. You will not die. They chose to listen to and believe in the snake's lying words. They didn't understand that God never, ever lies. When Adam and Eve did not listen and they ate a fruit from that tree, their eyes were open. They saw the wrong that they had done. But then it was too late. They felt bad, ugly, and so ashamed of their big mistake. God called their big mistake sin. Their sin made them fall away from God. At that very moment, just as God said, their spirits died. They died right inside them, and they were no longer friends with God. How sad. But God still loved them, so he sent Jesus, his only son. Jesus was punished and died for them. That's as if you did the wrong thing and someone who loved you took your punishment. Can you believe that? He made the way for them to be friends with God again. We are all children of Adam and Eve. Since we are, we were all born with everything that they had. They had two eyes, we were born 
with two eyes. They had a brain inside their heads and we were born with one too. They have hair and skin and we were born with hair and skin also. They had dead spirits and we were born with dead spirits as well. When we believe that God sent his only son Jesus to die on the cross for all of our mistakes, our sins, and we ask Jesus to come into our hearts and in our lives and to be our Savior and Lord, that means that he saves us from our sins, our mistakes, and he becomes in charge of our lives, then an amazing thing happened happens rather called a miracle and our dead spirits come alive again that's what jesus meant when he said that we needed to become born again born again on the inside jesus said that if we do not become born again we cannot see god's kingdom god is a king above he is the king above every king, and he has the best kingdom, and it's called heaven. He made it a beautiful home for people who love him, for me and for you. And thanks to Jesus, we can all go there when we die. It's a place where we will be so happy that we will never cry, and we will never get boo-boos or ouchies. And nothing bad will ever happen to us again. We cannot go to God's beautiful heavenly home if our spirits are dead. So if you want to go there when you die, and I pray that first you live a very long, and happy, and meaningful life. But if you want to go to God's beautiful heaven one day, you need to pray a simple prayer with me. If you don't know what that is, Praying is talking with God. Are you ready to do that? Let's do that together. I will say some words, then you copy me. I will say some more words, then you copy again. And we'll keep going until the prayer is done. I promise it won't take too long. One more important thing before we pray. You need to mean it. So listen to the words and think about what they mean as you are saying them. Are you ready? Remember, copy along. Let's go. Dear God, thank you for loving me so much that you let your only son, Jesus, die for me so that I can go to your beautiful heaven when I die, I know that I'm a sinner. That means I made mistakes and I hurt you. I'm sorry for my sins. Jesus, please forgive all my sins. Come into my heart and save me from my sins and make my spirit alive again. Help me now to live for you. Help me to make you happy by doing what's right and telling others about you. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer to God with me and you really meant it, you are born again. You are a Christian and that means a follower of Jesus Christ. Ask mommy or daddy to get you a Bible. That's God's book if you don't already have one. It will help you to learn more about God and how to follow him. If you can't read, no worries, mommy or daddy can read it to you. Now, my beloved young friend, God who saved you and brought your dead spirits back to life again, 
really loves you. And in his love, I love you too. Tell mommy or daddy to please like, subscribe, and share this video and my channel. Most of the time, it's for mom and dad, but this week, it's all for you. I have more good news for you. When you prayed with me and accepted Jesus as your Lord to be in charge of you and your Savior to save you from your sins, not only did he make your spirit alive again, but he gave you a special gift right on the inside of you, his own Holy Spirit. He is the same as God. It's God with you. He promises to never leave you. He will stay with you and he will help you no matter what. He will help you know the difference between what's right and wrong, good and bad. He will help you remember Jesus' words once you read them or once somebody reads them to you from his special book, his Bible. He will help you to get ready for his beautiful heaven. Now listen, as I pray one last prayer about him, God's special Holy Spirit that's living inside you. Lord, we do pray that you would pour out your spirit. I pray that every boy and girl, man or woman, that's watching right now, with the simplicity of your gospel, your good news is very simple, that Jesus loved us and that he died for us so that we can be friends with God again. And I pray in Jesus' name that that message would sink into the heart of everyone watching and their life would be changed and they would have joy, real happiness in their heart forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Arts and Crafts Today, Growing in Love. And you can see our Arts and Crafts project today. It's very long. It says, Grow Up Into Love. Okay, so to do this today, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a sheet of paper and we're going to draw a heart. And if you can't do that freehand, you know, a parent can help or a pastor. You know, write the word love inside. And I'm going to take some uh, a green marker, and we're going to make a whole bunch of leaves that we're going to put around. You can make as many as you want. Again, the children will have one sheet of computer paper, so they can just fill up their paper with leaves if they'd like. Again, we put a line going down like that. Slanty lines going up. You could do that to all the leaves. And come in with our pink or red crayon and we're going to color in that heart that's going to be like a flower at the top of our vine and again with as I said the other day with pencils the harder you push the darker the color is going to be and the harder it is going to be to get out with crayons it's the same thing when you push a little harder you're going to get a darker color When you push light, you're going to get a lighter color. Something to know about crayons when we're doing arts and crafts. So once I finish my all of my leaves and my heart, then we're going to cut them out, leave them on the side. And as I said um, at the beginning of the week, each child is going to get one sheet of green construction paper, and it's for this craft. So once again, I'm going to fold it in half. Fold it in half again. Now, that can be left together like this. And on top, near the end, we can draw a squiggly line, all kinds of bends in it, because that's going to be our vine. And do the same on the other side. You can use as much of the paper as you like. Okay. And then, Cut it out. And with younger children, when you're cutting, you want a line to be thicker. It'll be easier for them as a guide for when they're cutting. 
And again, if you leave the paper together, you have four different sheets underneath. This might be a little difficult for a young child. They might want to do one piece at a time. And as we're doing this arts and crafts, of course, we can talk to the children about um, Jesus said in the Gospel of John that he is the vine and we are the branches. So as they're making their vine, they could think about that. So again, to make this, we're going to tape or glue these pieces together and uh, cut out the leaves and the heart and affix them on throughout the vine. Write down your words, grow up into love, and remember that the Lord loves you. Take care, everyone. Here we are with our Hear It in Galatians section today. And I'd like to talk with you about what Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 5, verses 6 through 15. At the time, the Galatian Christians were being told by Christians who were first Jewish before they received Jesus that they should also be following the Old Testament Jewish law. Paul was explaining in these verses that that wouldn't help them at all. He said, what is important is faith expressing itself in love. Paul was upset about the Galatians listening to the Jewish Christians. He explained that they were running a race well and then made to stop running, and that they were held back from following the truth. Yeast is the thing in bread that makes it rise. When you have a little yeast in bread dough, it changes all of the dough. Paul explained that the false teaching of the Jewish Christians was like yeast that was spreading through their whole batch of dough. He also said that God would judge these Jewish Christians that were confusing them. Paul did not want them to worry about keeping all the Jewish laws perfectly. They needed to understand that there is only one way to be saved from sin and have a good relationship with God. That is to believe that Jesus died in their place on the cross and to receive him as their Lord and Savior. Paul told them that they had, they had been called to be free and that they needed to stay free. Since they were free though, they should not get bound up in sin again. Instead, he said to them to use their freedom to serve one another. For the whole law, he said, is summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Paul didn't want them to speak angrily to each other or spread gossip, rumors, or lies about each other. Paul wanted them to live loving lives toward God and one another. Now, we should do the same. to snack for love day growing in love so we know a verse to think about is for God so loved the world so the children with uh, kiwi and blueberry can create their own planet earth of course these don't quite look like the continents they can take more time if they want some of the older children might want to take more time with the kiwi to really make them look like the continents but there is the world. Another thing we can do for today, as we did on the day when we were talking about faith with the uh, star-shaped snacks, you can make with heart-shaped cookie cutters, heart-shaped snacks as well. Or you can make or buy um, cookies that look like planet Earth. Um, conversation hearts are another idea, but we just want to watch with small children, especially some of the messages might not be appropriate. Uh, there are also heart-shaped crackers that exist, or heart-shaped candies or lollipops as well are another option. So I hope you enjoyed this last snack for our Galatian Vacation VBS.
welcome back to Love Day. We're doing our memory verse for today. So the memory verse is found in Galatians 5.14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And for the younger children, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Just the last part of the verse, part B. Okay, so today's verse comes from Paul's writing to the Galatians throughout the whole book. He's basically talking to them about not being so concerned with those um, who were Jewish before they came to Christ, that they were so concerned that the Gentiles should practice Judaism as well by, by doing a number of things to keep the law. And Paul's message kind of comes together at the end of Galatians and saying that if you want to fulfill the law, the whole law is fulfilled just in this, loving your neighbor the way you love yourself. So boys and girls, that's a great lesson for us today. So today's activity is called verse shuffle, and this could be done in several ways. You could use post-it notes, you could put stickers, uh, you could put tape rather behind um, index cards, or you can just do this out on a table or on the floor um, with the children. So basically you're gonna take each word from the verse, and I use the verse for the small children, just for time's sake, and you're going to put one word on each card or, you know, whatever you're using. And we're going to cover up the verse after they've memorized it or they know it fairly well, we're gonna play the game. So we're gonna take a moment here, if you're with children right now, to pause the video and work with them on trying to remember the verse or basically uh, the verse, okay? All right, so if you pause the video, welcome back. We're going to play the game now. So if we remember the verse, you shall love your neighbor as yourself and the last part we put the verse Galatians 5 14 part B and we can check it to see if we are correct you shall love your neighbor as yourself Galatians 5 14 part B for the younger children I hope you liked this in fact I hope you love this have a great day for our last day, day five, and the day is talking about love. So we have Brian and Brandon are going to demonstrate hopscotch, but not in the traditional sense. Today we're gonna to do it by drawing hearts on the ground. So here's heart hopscotch. Cool. Cool. vacation are here with you for the last time Ooh. just kidding I'm sure that you had a great time I hope you did I did with VBS so here are our final closing thoughts and prayers for our Galatian vacation VBS so God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus we follow him and we do the same we show God's love to all that we meet so real love is serving others. So let's pray now. Lord, thank you for Jesus who taught us how to love. Love is not a feeling. Love is not just saying I love you, but love is showing it by serving, by giving up maybe sometimes what we want to do, by being kind to others when sometimes it's easier to be critical or to try to get back at someone for hurting us. So we ask you, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, that you would teach us your true love, which is serving and helping others in our lives. We thank you for that, Lord, and for our VBS experience this year. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen and amen. So I hope that you enjoyed your Galatian vacation this year. Thank you for joining us, and God bless you.